I've spent most of my life. When I was 14 years old, our church got a new parish priest. And uh, he was a very charismatic young man, younger than most priests. People, uh, people took to him immediately. And one day in confession, he asked to talk to me after. And confession is supposed to be an anonymous thing. And I guess I should have realized, I was only 14, but I should have realized that something was not right with that. But instead of feeling um, uh, afraid or suspicious, what I actually felt was, was special. He introduced me to, uh, to alcohol and cigarettes. And um, then he started to sexually abuse me. And I didn't feel special anymore. This is a truth that I always start these, these speeches with because, because it's hard. It's hard. Sometimes it's, uh, it's easier to say something in a song. Hold me, mother, I've met my match. Show me a family with no strings attached. Hold me, mother, cause I'm out of control. So tell me the story that I need to know. St. John's is a very social place. Newfoundlanders are very social, social people, and you'll have a great time there. If you're, uh, if you're looking for a drink, there's no easier place in Canada to buy one. <laughs> it's, it's the New Orleans of Canada, for sure. When we started our band, it was more of a function of paying off our bar tabs. We, we, we were in the pubs anyway, and there was bands playing, and then we figured, well, we noticed that the bands didn't have to pay for their drinks. So that was a motivation <laughs> to start performing. We went on, we sold over two million records. But essentially what that meant first was that we, we all hopped in a in a Dodge Caravan and drove from St. John's to Victoria and, and back five or six times. <laughs> all, all six of us piled into a van and we played five nights a week in bars right across the country, uh, spreading the word. And it was a great place to, to hide. My life started to become unmanageable. Um, waking up with that huge anxiety every morning if you're a drinker, it's just an unbearable weight. I'm not a religious person, obviously, anymore. I'm, I, I'm a spiritual person. I believe that we're all connected in some way. My higher power is my wife. Her name is Andrea. And uh, she gave me an ultimatum, and I took it to heart. The first thing that I, I had to deal with, though, uh, when I stopped drinking was a real sense of isolation because in St. John's, I was the leader of the, of the party parade, and I quickly learned that people you drink with are your drinking buddies. They're not your friends. So I was alone. I felt alone. The other thing I felt was this pain. I, I now, I, as a sober person, I wasn't hiding behind a bottle. So I remembered that priest, and I remembered what he did to me. And that really hurt. That really hurt. I picked up this guitar and I poured my heart into it. The first song I wrote as a sober person was this song. And uh, it's a very simple song. And I would love for you all to sing it with me because the song is strongest when it's sung with your friends. With me, friends? Word is stronger on the count of three we practice. One, two, three. Stronger. A little more muscle. One, two, three. Stronger. Awesome. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'll wink at you when it's your turn. Because I'm a Newfoundlander and that's how we communicate. I'm an alcoholic, but I do not drink. And I will not drink again. I have two beautiful children and a wife because of it, because I made that decision. I'm gonna take my time, I'm gonna sing my song. Yes. 
I was abused by my parish priest when I was 15 years old. And, but my past is not my prison. Not anymore. Because I've let that secret go. And thank you for letting me share that truth with you today. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Sean McCann. Please book me for your event. I would like to come to your town.